Welcome to With the First Pick, the CBS Sports NFL Draft Podcast here on CBS Sports Network. I'm Ryan Wilson. That over there and his guy at Buyer Shirt is our general manager, Rick Spielman, who has more than 30 years of NFL experience, including more than a decade as a Vikings general manager. And that handsome devil between us, that's Pete Prisco, who also has more than 30 years covering the league. And today, Pete, we're going through your Better Than team, which you release every single year before the draft. And before we get going, why don't you give the fine folks who are watching us, what, what is the uh, description of the Better Than team so we can understand what we're doing here? It's players I like more than the scouts. And it's something I've been doing for a long time. And, and by that, I you know, not all scouts, but most of the scouts. I like guys, down-the-line guys, who I think are going to end up being pretty good players. Uh, some of them end up being first round they have in the past, but most of them are not. Uh, and guys that have been the captains in the past are Levante David. Um, you know, you look at him, he's turned out to be a hell of a player. Grady Jarrett was a captain once upon a time. Now, there's been some captains that I've missed on. I'm not going to say they all hit. Uh, but they're down the line guys that I think are going to be better. How does the process work? I watch a ton of college football during the season. Guy stands out to me. I jot his name down. Uh, once the NFL season ends, I start, you know, deep into my draft prep. Uh, and I start watching a lot of tape on these guys. And if I watch their tape and I still like them, then they make the list. Um, if I watch their tape and I don't like them, they get cut from the list. This year, I had a tough time cutting the 20. I'll be honest with you. Uh, but I did cut the 20 and I really like my list. Yeah, I'm not ignoring you, Pete. I was actually looking to read your, your story on CBSSports.com. If you want to read it, Dak Prescott, Stephon Diggs. I think, Rick, you may have drafted Stephon Diggs. So you guys had some synergy there. The Darius Smith, and even last year, Tankdale, Sam Laporta, and Demario Douglas. I don't like to support you, but you actually crushed those guys. So I've got to give you a, a shout out there. And uh, Pete, I know you watch the podcast every day, but you probably know this. Before we get going, Rick, I'd like to start every show with a peek at the old with the first pick countdown board. So tell our fine viewers how many days. Yeah. Hey, Pete, did you know there are two, no, there are only seven days left until the 2024 NFL draft, and I do not know why Ryan Wilson would wear a jacket. It must be because the great Pete Prisco has really came on and shown his presence on this podcast today, so Ryan decided to dress up, which I think is just asinine. But he, you know what it is? This one isn't this one uh, going somewhere else, and so he's trying to he's trying to look professional when he normally he wears like a, a Under Armour shirt or something to the podcast. I mean, come on, Ryan, we know what you're doing. It's so obvious, it's blatantly obvious. He's not doing it for me. I tell you that right now. Hey guys, dress dress for the job you want. That's all I'm going to say. All right, let's get into this. And uh, Rick, you're a, a a teddy bear at heart, although you like to disagree and be a curmudgeon in person. Uh, so let's get started here. We're going to come off, talk about some of the players from Pete's list that you actually like. So let's let's get things started on a positive note. Uh, first up, young man, Michael Pratt, quarterback Tulane. That was on Rick's. Uh, that was on Pete's list, and you actually like Michael Pratt, right? Yeah, no, that was really hard for me uh, because I hate to agree with Pete on anything, and I really tried my utmost. <laughs> go the opposite direction on anything he says. But this one kind of grew on me the more and more I watch Pratt. I think that uh, he has good size. I think he's a very good athlete. I think he can make all the NFL throws. He needs to improve his accuracy on throws outside the pocket. I think he needs to be a little bit more patient in the, process, in the pocket, trying to process when he's reading defenses. But he's kind of started to climb as we went through this pre-draft process. We were down at LSU at their pro day and talked to a lot of people down there. Tulane actually had a pro day the day before, and everybody was raving how this kid threw and how he performed. So this kid is growing on me, and I think in that second tier, that second wave, that someone's going to take a swing uh, because of the potential upside with him. Hey, Pete, you see in the graphic there that I have Michael Pratt going in round four. Give me an idea where you think he goes, and if you have a comp, give me that. Otherwise, I have one for you that I'm sure you and Rick will love. Yeah, third or fourth. Uh, I think he's a third or fourth. And Rick, Rick mentioned that pro day and talking to guys around the league. One of the things, he doesn't really drive the ball at Tulane down the field. He, has, he needed to clean up some mechanics, and he did at his pro day, from what I heard. And he threw the ball much better. And here's another thing about him. He, he played 40, he had 44 starts. That's a lot of starts. And he got better every single year. That's a good sign as well. I, I think Michael Pratt's going to be a steal. And I said this all along. I would take Michael Pratt in the third or fourth before I take J.J. McCarthy in the top ten. I can guarantee you that. Uh, so uh, that's what I think about Michael Pratt. Who's the comp? The comp is tough for me. I, I, you know, I, I had a hard time figuring out a comp 
Um, but I just think he's going to be a, a guy that plays as a backup for a year. And then if a situation like what happened to Brock Purdy happens to him, I think he can become a star. You know, you get an opportunity, you make the most of it. I think that's what he could do. I think he was a better athlete than I thought when we saw him at the Senior Bowl. I thought he had a better arm than we thought. And, Rick, I don't want 10 minutes on this, but you can tell me what you think of this comp and just think in general terms. And Rick is black and white, Pete, so it's, it's going to be hard for him to figure this out. I went with, and Rick, and Pete touched on maybe a backup for a year to get some, some opportunities, maybe a little Colt McCoy. No, oh, God, no. No, he's, the, he's that's, better that's, than that's Colt McCoy. That's, 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 that's a terrible comp. That's a terrible comp. That's a terrible comp. Why what do you better even way, do comps? <laughs> what better way to bring Rick and Pete together than for me to give a comp? That's why I do it, Rick, to bring you guys together because uh, nothing's better than seeing you guys. <laughs> that that means, right, uh, that's a terrible. It's not even in the ballpark, by the way. That's no. not, even a, not even close. So this is one of the, the few examples where saying nothing would have been preferable to, to come up with a cop is what I'm hearing. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Lesson learned. Absolutely. All right. Next up, uh, Mike, um, Mikey Sanders still, the nickelback, who can actually can play some outside, former wide receiver. Rick, he also is a player that you love to see on Pete's Better Than Team. Yeah, I love this kid's competes. I think that he was a tone setter for their defense. I think he's a leader. He was a converted receiver that came over. I think he's going to be a Nick at the next level. I don't think he's going to be able to play outside. The one thing I think he needs to improve on is in man coverage, just mirroring. And I think that just comes with time and reps. It's not that he doesn't have the quickness and the lateral quickness to mirror. I just think he's a little raw right now in that area. But I thought this kid was a tone setter on defense. Um, I think my comp, Pete, I'm anxious to think, what, or will you hear, he reminded me a little of Clark Phillips out of Utah last year that ended up playing for the Atlanta Falcons this year. Yeah, and, you, you know, think? there's been some comps to, to Mike Hilton a little bit. You know, he's a little more athletic, I think, than Mike Hilton. Uh, what about a guy, Antoine Winfield, back in the day? God, no. Rick? No, he's not. No, no, no. Little, Antoine, little Antoine Winfield? Winfield? He was a little. Yeah, he, he was, was little, little though. Yeah, but he would light you up, and he was instinctive, and he made a lot of plays yeah, he was for tough. a small guy with the ball in the ears. Yeah. So does Mikey, Mikey Sanders still makes a lot of plays, too. I think he had, I think, what Maryland, he had two interceptions. I remember watching that game. I just don't think he is as thick as Antoine Winfield Sr., not junior. I'm talking about Antoine Winfield Sr. Yeah, and here's the other thing. He's not as thick, but he, he just reminds me of him a little bit. Here's the other thing. Who knew that we, during these podcasts – that it used to be the fifth defensive back. They decided, well, we're going to call him a nickel, right? It's a trendy little name. You know, it was a nickel. Now it's Nick. It's the Nick. You know, Rick, You're Rick is something. coming up with new terms. What, what is, You're learning something. Are you the only guy? I've never heard that called a Nick in my life, by the way. Never. What is, never. Well, not once. If you come on a podcast a little more, you learn a lot more about the game. Than right. You aside, know. It's called a aside, from, aside from him, have you ever heard him called a Nick? It's No, it's nickel. Uh no, I haven't. I will say my comp for him was, in fact, Mike Hilton, so that makes you look bad, Pete. Also, something else to keep in mind, I think he's a day-two guy all, all day long. I, I think landing spots that make sense, and teams that are actually, I've heard, that are interested in him include the Ravens, the Chargers, and even the Panthers. So that's something to look out for as we get through this draft process here. All right, next up, and uh, you know what's funny, Rick? When we talk to Pete this time of year, he tells us of, of all the guys he's discovered, and then he claims he's discovered them throughout the process, which is sort of a fun thing. Demario Douglas is a perfect example. Uh I will tell you, you this. You didn't like Rick him. Mitch he didn't like him. Rick mentioned <laughs> TJ Tampa, the cornerback out of, out of uh, Iowa State, probably a couple months ago, and he was high on him. So, again, some synergy there, Rick, in terms of another player you like on Pete's list. Yeah, I think he's long. Uh, I think he has long arms. I think he's going to fit best in his own coverage. Uh, I think he does have some ball awareness. I think he is a little sticky into and out of transition, especially if he has to turn his hips and he gets extended down the field. But he can be physical and press, and I think if he disrupts routes, he can stay on top of the receivers as they get extended down the field. I think he's going to fit in a great, uh, in a zone-type coverage. I think this guy comes up and will try to knock your head off. Love the way he comes up and runs support, although he's a little out of control. But this guy was a really good football player and kind of stuck out to me. Uh, back in the fall when not too many people were talking about him. So I appreciate you listening to With a First Pick podcast, Pete, and finding out that I do like some good football players that you added them to my list, to your list. 
When you say something and we're in that green room on Sundays, it goes in one ear and we're soaring <laughs> out the next. Believe me. I, uh, uh, no, he's a good football player. I, you know, Rick, he does tackle really well. He's a physical kid. Almost to the point, down the line, I could see him sliding inside playing safety. I really can. I, I think he's a... He's that kind of he's that kind of kid who can move inside and be a be a safety, and and I think that's something that could help his draft stock a little bit. Day two guy, I feel like uh, the comp, and you guys can you can go through your, one ear, not the other, if you want to. Here, Pete uh, Joshua Williams, physically coming out of Fayetteville State, playing for the Chiefs, uh, he's probably to your point better in zone. Maybe he moves to to safety. Josh is a little better athlete, I think, but they both ran the four or fives. I think TJ plays faster than that. All right. Let's get I, this is a player again. Th- it's weird how much you guys agree on these players, Rick, and I'm sure this is going to cause you to have uh, some serious self reflection after the show. But let's go to tight end Jared Wiley. Also, maybe maybe Pete's uh, cheating off your paper. Yeah, no, I love this kid. Uh, this kid is long, he's athletic, uh, he's not a blocker, uh, but I do think that he does a very good job getting into and out of his cuts for how tall he is. I think he has excellent catch and radius. I think he can adjust off target throws. And I think he has some weave and speed after the catch. So I really thought this guy is going to help a team as a potential pass catching tight end, trying to create mismatches on linebackers and safety. Don't put him in there and put him in a three point stance and try to root out a defensive end. That's not going to be where he makes his money. But I really like this kid. I thought he can fill out a role for some team. Are you ready for my comps, Pete, before you comment on that? A little bit, Luke, little bit Luke Musgrave and a little bit Tyler Higby were the two that kind of pop into my head. Yeah, that's, that's actually pretty good. I, I like those two comparisons. You know, here's the other thing about him. He's a former quarterback, so he understands the passing game. He understands where to sit down in zones. He knows how to do that. You mentioned his blocking. He's a willing blocker. He's just not great at it. I mean, he's willing. There are times when they keep him in in pass protection. He can block. He's blocked the defensive end. He will wham a guy. So he's willing. He's just not that physical because he's a former quarterback. Here's the interesting thing about him. His 40 time was, what, 4.62? I think that's what he was timed at. Yep. You know who else ran 4.62 when he came out? Travis Kelsey. I was going to say, I was waiting for the Travis Kelsey comp. I don't right, think he's no. Travis Kelsey. That's a high. I mean, you're you're right. asking a kid to go on to the next world level, but but he ran the same time. He, and and it's interesting. You talk about him being able to move and make people miss and and sit down in zones. I mean, that's what Travis Kelsey's great at. So I'm not saying he's Travis Kelsey. I'm just saying he ran the same time. I What's that called, McCoy? That's a terrible Travis cop. Kelsey. I agree. Yeah, no, I did. I didn't compare him to Travis Kelsey. Kelsey. I just said he ran the same time. You actually said the kid was like. Colt McCoy was like Michael Pratt, and they're not even in the same area code. Oh gosh, this is my life. Ryan, did you actually have a, any comps that are that let it, were close to what we just talked about this kid, or no? Uh, let's talk about this next player because you're going to love this comp. And this is a guy <laughs> that I turned I turned Rick on to this young man. And Pete, maybe you're cheating off my paper. Uh, Pit wide receiver Bub Means. He is a fun player. Plays primarily outside. Runs mostly down the field. He is a contested catch machine, but he does have the ability to occasionally stack these defensive backs uh, in those vertical routes. I liked him a lot, and it's one of those things when you end up watching all these guys, you, you get into a routine, and then someone sticks out. But means stuck out to me. He ran in the four fours, and Rick and I have talked about him. I didn't think he quite played that fast. So my, for my comp for him, and Rick previously liked it, we'll see if he changes his mind, was A.T. Perry out of Wake Forest last year. Yeah, I mean, look, I like him a lot. He's another one who played defensive back at points in his career. So um, I I think when you look at him, the one thing that stood out to me on tape was this kid could have melted down on his quarterbacks. They were awful. I mean, he's open and they can't get the ball to him. It it was so bad. The pick quarterback situation was awful last year. And if it wasn't bad, he would have had many more catches down the field. He is a straight lane guy. You're going to have to teach him. You know, he's going to have to learn the route tree. But I, I think there's ability there, and I think he's going to end up being a really good player. Watch his speed, and I think it is a build-up speed guy because the Virginia Tech game, I think also uh, there was another game that I saw him run post routes that he just outran everybody, but it's at a build-up type speed. I think this guy is stiff through his lower, especially on routes coming back to the quarterback. 
or if he has to gear back on a comeback route, I think that's where you see the stiffness in his lower body. I think he has very good hands, made a great catch against Renardo Green, the Florida State corner, who I really like. I'm surprised he didn't make this list for you, Pete, but really good football player went up, went up over top of him. So I think this kid is a Saturday guy, but someone may get a steal as a down-the-threat uh, guy that can go up and get the ball, especially in the red zone. Early day three? Pete, just so you know, Pete, it's Bub. I called him Bud like 62 times before I figured out it was a B instead of a D. Bub! <laughs> Bub! Bub. <laughs> this is my life, Pete, day in and day out. I spend, no, I spend time with Rick more than my family. And he refuses to call this young man by his name. Bub. Bub it is. All right. Look, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, apparently, these were the guys that we like, Pete. When we come back, we're going to tell you about some of the guys that we liked a little less. And we'll give you reasons why right after this. Welcome back to with the first pick here on CBS Sports Network. All right. We talked about the players that we loved from Pete's Better Than team. Rick, let's talk about some of the players that you disagreed with that were on the list. Pete is ready to take on all comers. First up, Troy Franklin, the wide receiver out of Oregon. Almost 6'2", about 175-ish. Uh, ran really well at the combine. I thought he played fast. I thought he had to uh, forced missed tackles in the open field to stack those defensive backs. But, Rick, why do you have him on this list? Well, Pete, I'm going to sadly disagree with you. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> so I do recognize... <laughs> <laughs> I do recognize this guy's speed, and he can extend down the field. I think he is leggy into and out of his cuts. I think this lean frame, he does not win contested catches, 50-50 balls. He is not much of a rack guy. If someone comes up and hit him, he goes down on first contact. I just think he's an oozer. I think he can be a vertical threat. I do think he can track the ball deep. The Washington game that I watched, he had eight catches for 154 yards and a touchdown. So you recognize that he has talent. I'm concerned about the weight. I'm concerned about the legginess getting into and out of his cuts. I'm concerned about the 50-50 catches because he's 175 pounds. And I'm concerned about him even getting off the line of scrimmage, especially when these physical corners at the next level are going to really hold him up uh, on his release uh, getting up field. Yeah, the game has changed. You move guys around, you get them in motion. It's hard to get hands on guys like you used to, Rick. You know, there's so much pre snap motion now, it's not an issue. This kid can fly. Every single time he touches the football, defensive backs are going to hold their breath. You talk about not being able to make big plays out of short passes. He turned slants, he ran through the defense on a bunch of those last year. If it wasn't for some underthrown balls by Bo Nix, and there were plenty of them, he would have had even more big plays down the field. I, look, Rick hates every skinny little guy there is, but he raved about a five foot nine, hundred and seventy five pound quarterback a year ago that went first overall. I just don't get the method to his madness. All right, uh, Rick, I'll ask you, and then Pete, you follow up. Second round pick or higher? Oh, God, this guy is not going I, in the first round. This guy is a second round no, pick all the day. He won't, go, he won't go in the first round. He should go in the first round. No, he shouldn't. Okay. Not in this draft. Yes, guy. he should. Well, no, I mean, you draft. know, because what if I told you back in the day that Stefan Diggs should have gone in the first round? Would you have said no? Of course you would have said no. Should, looking back on it, should he have been a first round pick? Yeah. Yeah, but we got him in the fifth. What do you want me to do? Right. Well, yeah, I know. I'm just, I, I, that's just it. That just goes to show you that nobody knows. You don't know. If you thought he was that good, you would have drafted him in the first or second round. You have no idea. Let's, hey, Rick, let's tone it down a little bit because Pete's getting worked up, and I don't want him to pass out on there. So let's let's dial it back. If you, I'm a, I'm if a, you, I just like I, I just like to say that everybody thinks they know, and none of us really know, including the teams. That's, yeah, that's actually. <laughs> Closer to the truth, probably. All right, Rick, I'm going to give you the list of the other players that you disagreed with on Pete's team, and you pick out one, and you can take Pete to task on it. Uh, Rasheen Ali, the running back, Mo Kamara, the edge rusher out of Colorado State, and Javon Solomon, another edge rusher, two-point stance guy out of Troy. Any of those guys you want to target and take uh, Pete to task with? Well, the one thing that I'll recognize is that they're all really good football players. I'll give Pete that credit. But you can take the two edge rushers and put them in a clown car and send them off to the circus because they're 6'1", 240 pounds, and they don't have length. So those guys would be eliminated. They're going to have to be DPRs or designated pass rushers. And if they don't win with their quickness right off the snap, 
and these big offensive tackles get their hands on them, that's where they're going to struggle. And they're not going to be 17 games, 60 snap starters. They're going to have to be DPR, designated press rushers. And if they can get some space to work in, I do, when I went back and watched these guys, they are going Jesse's off the edge. They have some twitch, but I, I'm just concerned about the height. So I couldn't tell the difference between those two because they're almost two peas in a pod the way they play and with the energy they play. I actually like the Troy Stay kid maybe even a hair better, even though he ran slower at the combine than the other kid did. So I give credit to Pete for finding good football players, but will that translate to the NFL with 6'1", edge rushers coming off? That's exception to the rule if one of these guys make it. And which one of these guys is going to be the exception? Which one's going to be the rule? Yeah, you know what? You're right. They're they're not they're not they don't look prototypical at all, but they're good football players. And and you find a spot for good football players. And I think you're spot on, Rick. They're going to be designated pass rushers. That's what they are. But everybody rotates guys in and out nowadays. And it's and, and so if you get 25 snaps, hey, Bryce Hopp, just, what did he get? He got a new deal, right? And, and look what he did. He was a situational pass rusher. He couldn't play the run. And so everybody's looking for that guy. So that's why I put them both on there. And again, Ryan, real quick, what's he pinging them for? Not because they're not good football players, but because of their size. Again, he drafted guards and centers that were five foot eleven when he was they're in this Minnesota. Big. They're this big. Uh, all You're right, let's go to the player in that... Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shot of Garrett Bradbury. Unnecessary, Pete. But let's go to the list of, of players that I, I had some issues with. And uh, Rick, you know this, but people who are watching may not. Pete likes to make fun of me because I love everybody. And I do love everybody. I, even you two, I try to bring us together, even though the, the way you treat me, some may disagree with, including my, my family. Uh, but here's the guy I'm going to give you a name that at first blush, you're like, why is this guy on the list? Trey Benson running back out of Florida State. And he's on this list, not because I don't love him, because, of course, Pete, I do love him. Uh, he's a hard runner. He runs with low pad level. He can run between the tackles. He can bounce it outside. He's an asset in the pass game, all those things. But he's not flying under anyone's radar, it feels like. He has a chance to be running back one. He's not my running back one. It's close. But, Pete, explain to me why he's on this list when I feel like we, sh we all know who Trey Benson is. Well, you have to put running backs on the list, and, and he's not going to be a first-rounder. He's probably going to be a mid-second rounder, maybe early second rounder, if that. And, and so that's why I put him on the list. I, I love him. I, I think if you know how I have a, a real pushback against taking running backs in the first round, and I wouldn't take a running back in the first round, nor would I pay a running back a free agent contract. But I think this is where you can get a guy like Benson, four years, five years, and then you go find another one. That's my belief in drafting and developing running backs. I think he's a hard runner. I love the fact that he was still able to do what he could do coming back from major knee surgery. And that thing was really bad at Oregon. That tells you he's committed. That tells you he's dedicated. I love the way he runs. I think he's going to be a big-time player. Rick, round, round two, round three, what are you thinking? Yeah, no, I do love this kid's style of running. Although he's a little upright, he's going to take some shot. But he's the as you would put it, the hammer rather than the nail. So when guys come up, he's the one that's going to deliver the blow on the defenders. And I was surprised at how fast for uh, the size this guy is, how fast he can run. Ran fast at the combine. I think he's okay catching the ball out of the backfield. I think he'll be a good complimentary back. Reminded me of the violence, and Pete, you're going to hate this because you hated the guy coming out. But Tank Bigsby ran like that when he was coming out of Auburn. He was a big, physical, violent runner. Well, that's that didn't work out for Jackson. <laughs> hey, I hope Trey Benson's better than Tank Bigsby was last year. I can tell you that. Oh, my God. There you go. You don't judge these guys off of one year. Let's talk three years from now, and then we'll see where everything's at. Well, don't worry. I'm grading your 2021 draft as we speak for some piece I'm working on later on. We'll grade you. Don't worry. I got it coming, buddy. Uh, this is a this is a comment geared towards our older audience. I'm not sure which of you, which one of you is Jack Lemon and which one of you is Walter Matthau, but uh, one is one and one is the other. Grumpy old men. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. <laughs> when we come back, uh, great news, Pete. Rick has some additions to your better than team to make that better than team better, and we'll talk about that right after this. Welcome back to With the First Pick here on CBS Sports Network. We're going through Pete Prisco's Better Than Team. And Pete, 
Your buddy Rick Spielman's here to make your list better because he has some additions that he'd like to share with us, and hopefully you will treat him with the same respect that you guys treat me. Uh, <laughs> Rick, first up, let's start with running back Jalen Wright out of Tennessee. Again, he feels like a Trey Benson sort of pick, but you can explain yourself. Yeah, no, I think this kid's the most explosive out of all the running backs with the ball in his hands. He led the FBS in plus 10-yard runs. Uh, he has low tread on his tires. He can catch the ball in the backfield. My comp to him was Melvin Gordon, except without the fumble issues. Well, that's that's actually encouraging. Hey, before you answer, Pete, let me add, let me let me put this out there to you. Your guy is Trey Benson. Rick's guy is Jalen Wright. We like to do some one dollar bets on with the first pick. Who gets drafted first, Pete? Which which side of the one dollar bet do you want to be on? Benson. Benson will go first. Okay. You okay with that, Rick? Benson. I, but no. I, but I'll be honest with you. I think they're going to be. I think they're going to be drafted real close together. I, I like both of them. I, I'll give him credit for that one. I like both of them. Okay. Uh, I think both guys right. will be be drafted in that in that same area. The reason Wright will go before Benson is because Benson had his knee sewn on backwards. Now, great success story, but Wright is a healthy. He's played back. two years since. He's played two years since then. That, that's fine, but you're going to have the wear and tear on that knee if you listen to the doctor. You're going to get a new one. Gonna you're going to get a new one in four years. Any you get a new one in four <laughs> years, anyways. What's the difference? <laughs> new knee or new running back? <laughs> new running back. Draft them. That's another one. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's move on here because uh, you guys are getting heated. I'm going to skip down a little bit on your list, and we can bounce around here, uh, Rick. Let's talk about Max Melton, the uh, cornerback out of Rutgers, whose brother Bo, wide receiver for the Packers. So he obviously has some uh, professional athlete athleticism in his genes here. Tell me about Max Melton. Yeah, I really like this kid. The more I watched him at Rutgers, I think he can play outside. I think he can play inside over at Nick. I think he's physical and support. He does have ball skills. I think he's best reacting to routes in front of him, but I – he tested well at the combine. He runs well enough. When I looked at this guy, I kept going back and forth on a comparison. And you know who he reminded me of when it's said and done? They could play outside, inside, maybe in some safety. Uh, is uh, Jatavius Martin from Illinois, who ended up with the Washington Commanders last year. Yep. Yeah, Martin, I mean, look, absolutely. He, these are good football players. Yeah, he's a good football player. And and you know what, Rick? I, I like your list. You have a lot of good football players on that list. I, I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to you know push back against most of them. I think you you hit a lot of good players there. I mean, the tackle from Pittsburgh, I think he's a guard. I think he's going to go slide inside and be a really good guard the next level. I think I think you hit that one too. He was almost on my team to be honest with you. So, I, I think you did a nice job with your group. Well, uh, I, he's, you know, he's that, that's you very kindness, encouraging. For, that's very encouraging for me, Pete. It's not like a, I don't do this for a hobby. I used to do it for a living, actually. Well, you know what that is? <laughs> that tells me that all those Sundays <laughs> sitting in those green rooms with me has rubbed <laughs> off on you. I like it. <laughs> all right, Rick. Let me put this one to you. You had Max Melton. Uh, Pete has Mikey Sanders still on his list. Let's do another dollar bet. Who goes first, Max Melton or Mikey Sanders still among the cornerbacks or Knicks, as, uh, as Pete likes to call it. Yeah, Melton is because he can play both outside and in. Uh, as as I referred to, Mikey is just a Nick. The other guy can play outside and inside. And you want to give a team multiple positions on the defensive side of the ball. All right, let's let's go to Ben Sennett, a guy that Pete um, Rick has been high on for quite a while. I want to hear his comp because the comp he had at the combine, I'm sure he'll change it and laugh at me when I tell you what it is. But talk about Ben Sennett, Kansas State tight end. Yeah, I love this kid. You know, he wasn't highly recruited. Walk on, seems to overcome all the odds. Always has a point to prove. Has a chip on his shoulder. I think you can play this guy at multiple positions. You can move him in at H back, full back. I think he's can line him up as a traditional Y on the line of scrimmage. I think that he is an underrated athlete. I know he only ran, I think, four seven or somewhere in that area, but he jumped out of the gym during the combine. He's a very good route runner. He can catch. I think he has some run after catch skills. I don't think he's an exceptional in one area, but he's a very good football player in all those areas where he can run, he can catch, and he can block. And I think someone's going to get a multi-positional player. That seems to be what the NFL teams are looking for right now, especially at that position. Pete, you're going to like this one. He reminded me a little of Sam Laporta when he came out last year out of Iowa. Mm, 
No, I don't see that one. Uh, I what, think what he, don't you I see? think he's more. I, I don't. I don't think he has the same explosive ability as Laporta has. I, I don't think he's going to be that guy. I think he's more H back, fullback, like you talked about, and then 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 a guy who can split out wide and go win down the field. And Laporta wins down the field. I I, I don't see that. that. That's a bad comparison. The that's, only that's thing almost, I'm saying is you have to project because you had to project that. I don't think anyone knew Laporta was going to be who he was going to be the way Iowa used him. Ah, uh, Pete knew. Pete knew. <laughs> go, go read the blurb when I wrote about him last year. Go read it. I, I knew. Okay. You wouldn't have known about him until I told you about him. Yeah, <laughs> please. By the way, Ryan, you think that's a bad comparison, too. I can tell by your face. You just don't want to say it. No, we talked about it. In fact, uh, Ben told us at the combine that he actually told teams when they asked him who did he pattern himself after. He brought up Sam Laporta's name to several teams. All right, Pete, I'll let you make this dollar bet here because you had Jared Wiley and you even have um, Dallin Holker out of Colorado State uh, among your better than tight ends. Who gets drafted first, Wiley or Ben Sennett? Dollar bet. Wiley. Wiley. Ben Senate. What do you Senate. Think? There you go. Got another dollar okay. bet in the books. And th and they'll both be picked before Holker, by the way. Holker's a guy. I think so. Line that's guy. right. All right, yeah. Rick, I'll ask you this. Any of these tight ends that we're talking about here make their way into round two? Uh, I see them more bottom of the second, top of the th in the third. I don't see Adams like top yeah. of the second round. There's too much other talented other I agree. positions. Okay. All I right. Agree. Hey, look. We're ending on a positive note. There's going to be more positivity after the break, for, uh, Pete, because I'm going to come back and tell you some guys that should have been on your team because I love everybody. Don't I do it. You do. Guys. The, the whole Rick, draft board, everybody, just going to release the scroll. They are all should be on it. Rick, Rick knows who's coming. We're going to talk about this fine young man right after the break. Welcome back to with the first pick here on CBS Sports Network. I spent the three minutes in the break getting uh, harassed by these two fine young men. So I'm happy to get back to talking football. And Rick, you gave the players that would improve Pete's better than team. Now it's my turn. And Rick, you were a little concerned going into the break because you knew this guy's name was coming up. I've been talking about him for, for months now. Uh, Pete, South Carolina quarterback, Spencer Rattler. How is he not on this list? You know, I don't dislike Spencer Rattler's game as much as Rick does. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Um, I think he can spin the football, uh, and there's talent there. It just there were moments you watch him and you go, "What in the hell is he doing?" And that's concerning to me when you evaluate a quarterback. And that's why I don't. I know you love him. I mean, you would take him. I think you would take him ahead of JJ McCarthy. No, that's not true. I would take him. In, I would think about him in the second round. I think he's the toughest kid in this draft. He's six feet. He only ran a four nine five. I thought he was a little more athletic than that. You talk about this, Pete. He can absolutely spin it. You hear Rick laughing. I get this all the time. And you know why Rick's laughing, Pete? I love to tell this story because at the combine, I'm minding my own business, standing off to the side, and who approaches me with Spencer Rattler and says, "Hey, man, thanks for having my back." And then he points to Rick across the way. There goes that guy. Not so much. And that's why Rick's laughing, because he doesn't like to talk about Spencer Rattler. All right, Rick, all that said, would you take him at any point on day two? No. He's he's fourth, fifth rounder to me, and you take a shot at him there. But I, I would not take him on Friday. Too many holes in his game, too many in, uh, decisions that are, like Pete said, and I'm going to agree with Pete, that they're mind-blowing on some of the things that you see him do and the decisions he makes on tape. Now, I give him credit. He can throw the ball. Uh, and I thought he was going to be more athletic than the 4.9 he ran at the combine. But the decision-making, I don't know if that's correctable because it is mind-numbing watching some of the throws that he makes, especially at the end of games or in critical situations uh, during the game. I think he's a fourth-rounder. I think he'll go in the fourth round. He might go because people get desperate for quarterbacks third round. Would you take Spencer Rattler or Kellen Mond, who went in the third round of some team <laughs> back in the day? <laughs> Who's okay. a better quarterback? Rick, Rick quit laughing when you said that. <laughs> I'm taking Michael Pratt. All right. <laughs> okay, you look. Know what else? You know what else? Ryan, Ryan Wilson loved Kellen Mond, too, by the way. You, you know what? You, you, pin, you pin Christian Ponder on me, Ryan. I'm pinning Kellen Mond on you, buddy. Well, let's do a dollar bet because I think I'm going to win this dollar bet. I'll, I, I'm guessing that Pete and Rick are team Michael Pratt. I'm going to say that Spencer Rattler goes before Michael Pratt. Okay? 
There we go. Look at that. I mean, this guy throws with anticipation. He's tough. Look, we can talk all we want about mind-numbing decisions. There's some guys that didn't get drafted in the top 10 picks uh, at quarterback that had some mind-numbing throws, but we won't get into that in this show. Both these guys, Michael Pratt and Spencer Rattler, are, are good players, and I think probably early day three makes the most sense, but you guys talked about it. Quarterbacks get pushed up, and maybe they end up going late day two. All right, Pete, that brings me to another quarterback. And this quarterback had BMAC and Danny Cannell all excited up until the moment that he was playing in that meaningless game and got hurt. Jordan Travis, you see his name there. I think he is a lot of fun. He outplayed LSU uh, in that week one, week zero game when uh, Florida State had to face the Tigers and beat them. He had a lot of weapons, but I thought he did a lot of things in terms of growing his game. He's a good athlete, has a good arm, does make good decisions. Any thought to the idea of putting Jordan Travis on this team? No. And, and you mentioned he's a good athlete, and he moves, and he can get outside and create, but now he's got a major injury, and, and that's the concerning part about it. Is he going to be able to do the thing? Because a big part of his game was being able to move. And, you know, is he going to be able to move with the same ability that he did before the injury? And so that's concerning. He's not a big guy either. I mean, what, what, what did he test out of? It wasn't very big. 6'1". So, he's 6'1". You, know, you, you know me with quarterbacks. I, I like my guys a little bit taller. Um, and, and so that's concerning to me. What do you think, Rick? What do yeah, you think about Jordan's game? Yeah, no, I, I thought that he was a pretty good football player when healthy. He's more of an improviser than I think just standing back in the pocket and going through progressions. He's best when he can move around. And then, but some of the decisions he makes, I believe it was the, if I'm not mistaken, the Florida game. I can't remember what game, but it was the, was it the, who was the opener against LSU? LSU, LSU, LSU. But some of the balls he put up for grabs, it should have been picks, weren't picks, too. So this guy makes a couple mind-numbing decisions as well. But I do like his creativity outside of the pocket. Uh, he does like to do some jump throws and some off-schedule type plays, which I think is to his benefit. Uh, but I think that you know, with the injury, like Pete said, and the size, that someone will take a shot at him as a college free agent. It would have been interesting if he, saw, if, uh, he was going to get drafted later in the draft, if he stayed healthy, but I think he's a college free agent at this point. The interesting thing about this draft is who are the late, late round quarterbacks? Who are they? There, there aren't many. You know, there's not, there's not a dra- no. lot of draftable guys at the back. I mean, like, there's not a Brock Purdy sitting there. And I'm not saying, I'm saying a guy that was a good quality college starter for a long time who's going to be available in the seventh round. Are there any of those guys? I mean, that's, you know, well, I don't know if there are any. I think Jordan yeah, Travis does have a chance say, to get drafted. Yeah, go ahead and say Spencer Rattler is the next Brock Purdy. I'm waiting for it, Ryan. Oh, yeah. I wasn't even thinking you know, about but, that, but I'll say that. By the way, Ryan, you remember the kid from UTEP. I told you about him a couple of years ago, but he got hurt. He got really, yeah. didn't he? May, yeah, because he, he could throw the football, but he got hurt. That was his problem. I mean, there's also, uh, we haven't talked a lot about him, but uh, Tua's brother coming out of Maryland, he could be in the conversation for a late Ryan Flyer, maybe more likely to be a priority free agent. But just in terms of your, your point, Pete, it is hard to find those guys. One name I'll mention quickly here, because I know Rick loves tiny uh, slot receivers. And by the way, Pete, the guys who line up opposite slots are called Knicks, just so you know. Anthony Gold Knicks, out Knicks. of Oregon State. You like him? Yeah, I do, actually. Um, wh- why does so, Rick like him? About him he's on too little. List? Yeah, I did. did you think about Actually, him on the list? I like yeah, him. Okay. I had too many receivers on the list, so I had to pair. You know, the receiver position is loaded. It's drafts, so they got to pare it down a little bit. But yeah, I do like him. And Rick obviously does not like him, just like he didn't like Tank Dell last year when I put, tried to sell oh him on God, Tank Dell. God, you're putting words in my mouth. Please. <laughs> <laughs> too little, too little, too little, too little, too little. It's like, a, it's like Rick. he's not big enough. He's not big enough. Rick actually okay, did like Tank Dell at the Senior Bowl. Yeah, I did. Here's my point, Pete. I'm going to make it to you. This because you did put a little guy on your list. And this Anthony Gold, I know he's fast, but he's a body catcher. He's stiff through his lower body. So uh, I have some issues with him. Too many drops in the Washington game that I watch. Play small down the field. All that blah, blah, blah. The little guy that I kind of liked uh, was uh, Jaquan Jackson, the Tulane little receiver. Now that guy can fly and he can get vertically down. I don't know how courageous he is coming in the middle at times because uh, he has some drops. You know who he reminded me of? Uh, Jackson from Tulane. You're going to like this. Your guy that you loved from Liberty last year up in New England. Would you say that he has a little um, 
The Mario, the Mario Douglas. Douglas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why he's on my team. He's on my better than team. Uh, watching Pratt, right. I liked him. And uh, and he can return. He's a returner, too. You get value for that. He's a good returner. Yeah. Well, we All should right, be we talking take, about take this a break instead here. of this gold guy. This gold guy. Pride of free agent. All right. All right. Listen. Rick, I know you have a bowling thing to get to, but we got to take a break here. Pete's going to leave us. Pete, it was so good to see you. When we come back, say hello, say hello to Wilma. Say hello to Wilma. <laughs> Wilma and Barney Rubble. Right after the break, right after this. Thank you, Petey. <laughs> Welcome back to with the first pick here on CBS Sports Network. All right, Rick, we got a few moments here before we have to go. We're going to take a look at some of your real life better than picks. Let's go to the 2015 draft. You took Daniil Hunter. 88th overall, and then you somehow got Stefan Diggs, who we talked about previously in the show, at 146. Tell us the stories on how those guys fell to you and how you knew they were the right guys to take. Yeah, Daniel Hunter's situation, it was production coming out of college. I had an opportunity to go down and see him play live versus Mississippi State. When I saw him walk out of the locker room, it was like, you can't draw him up any better than this. I wish I can describe it, but you can't describe it unless you actually see it. So, there was this unique athlete with this unique length, with this unique speed that needed to get technically sound, especially with his pass rush. So took the defensive coordinator, took uh, Andre Patterson, who to me is one of the best defensive line coaches in the league, went down and worked him out at LSU, blew the workout away. It was almost like a private workout because we put him through all these drills and we taught him. And the one thing that he had besides the unique athletic traits, he loved to play football and he was a high character guy. So those type of guys, I didn't mind, and we didn't mind taking a gamble on. That's why he became Daniil Hunter. And what about Steph Dix? Because he is a first-round talent all day long. You got him late, middle of day three. Yeah, I think that was a little bit more some of the off-field concerns with him. But okay. I saw him play live against Virginia his freshman year. And opening kickoff, they actually kick off to him. And you see this speed guy just running by everybody down the field. And then you go down and put a little star by his name on a depth chart. Oh, he's only a freshman. Maybe this guy will be good down the road sometime. I think Stefan Diggs had unique physical traits. I think he had great hands. All that that we see translate to the NFL. I think the biggest thing was the character issues that may have knocked him down to where we were willing to take a shot on him in the fifth round. And when you trade him to Buffalo, I believe the compensation you got in return ended up being Justin Jefferson. Is that correct? Yeah, that was a win-win trade, I would call it. Um, you know, did good up at Buffalo, and then they moved on from him, as we know, this offseason. But we were able to replace him with uh, Justin Jefferson, who was another pretty unique talent. So that doesn't happen a lot in the NFL, but it was a rare win-win trade. All right. Thank you, Rick. You took us right up to the border there with the first pick. Check it out wherever you get your podcast. Thanks for joining us.